So yesterday morning, I had the absolute privilege of being an invited guest speaker at the very first conference for counsellors in South Africa. And the topic that I spoke on was, can counselling be a successful, profitable business? And after the conference had finished, we at Vita Nova thought, this is actually information that so many more people could benefit from. So we decided to record this video to share the information with all of you as well. So let's get to the topic at hand. Can counselling be a successful and a profitable business? The short answer to this question is yes, it definitely can be. And the Vita Nova journey is a testament to exactly that. So let me start off by giving you a brief overview of the last nine years. I started my counselling practice, Vita Nova, in 2010. Started seeing people in my living room, driving my kids to my mom's whenever I had a session booked. I soon realised that this was not an ideal situation and we rented a garden flat close to home for about two and a half thousand rand per month and we did so for six months. The major concern for me at that point in time was whether or not I would be able to cover my rent but that proved not to be a problem at all. I had a very clear vision of what I wanted to achieve and where I was headed and with a lot of hard work, dedication, perseverance and a lot of grace from God we managed to achieve exactly that. Within six months, it was evident that Vita Nova would be able to generate enough revenue to cover the bond on a property not far from our house. The previous owners of this house utilized the property for their business, so it was ideal. It had ample parking, the garage was already converted into a nice venue, um, which we could utilize for training, workshops, informative talks. In addition to the four bedrooms that it had, they had added two additional office spaces in what would be the living room area of the house. This property put me in a position to actively start pursuing this vision that was growing in the back of my mind. A mere three years later, we had six people working under the Vita Nova brand. It was myself, a forensic social worker, a play therapist, clinical psychologist, educational psychologist, and a family therapist. This multidisciplinary team was exactly what I had envisioned for Vita Nova. We soon started to become a source of information and content to various journalists, contributing to magazines such as Frauekir, Sari, Oprah, Baban Kleter, Bella, Lich, to name but a few. We actively contribute content to newspapers such as Bild, City Press, and the Sunday Times. We're often invited to appear on radio and television programs and very blessed to contribute to various requests from journalists all over. One of the things that we really enjoy at Vita Nova is offering informative talks, workshops and training. The topics could vary from parenting, relationships, if it comes to parents or couples, and then we also offer training for practitioners on topics such as um, how to start and run your practice successfully basic couples counselling skills, attachment, working with a child client. That's something that we're really passionate about. In April of this year, we opened our second Vita Nova branch, and this one in Peter Maritzburg. We've got two very competent ladies running things that side for us, Rulin Wiesner and Luanne Shuttleworth. We also developed a very handy emotional toolbox. This is a toolkit for practitioners working with children. It helps with identifying emotions, emotional regulation, and many more. It's just a fun added bonus for anybody working with kids. Heska Sangster is a forensic social worker who has been working with Vita Nova for several years. And in August of this year, we took the leap to employ her full time. Anshul Peterson is our play therapist, and she also works with Vita Nova on a part time basis. And we're hoping to be able to do the same for her soon to employ her full time as well. We're also currently building on and investing time, energy and money into the training side of Vita Nova as well by adding the Humanitas training course to our training portfolio. The Humanitas counselling course is specifically geared towards students who've got either a degree or an honours degree in social work, psychology, but also theology and many more different subjects. Our aim here is to not just provide them with theoretical training, but also enable them to get some practical experience. We've organized internships with various organizations 
in the Pretoria, Johannesburg and Durban area. And our current students are doing very well. One of our students actually have been offered a job opportunity at one of the places that she's been doing her practicals. The Humanitas 2020 courses are doing extremely well already. February's intake is fully booked and we've got about four or five seats left for May. Vita Nova is looking at expanding throughout the rest of the country as well. So if you're interested in partnering with us in different ways, we'll still discuss all of that. You're welcome to give us a call or send us an email to the contact details that you'll see on your screen right now. All of this sounds amazing, right? Vita Nova is a huge success. But if I were to share only this version of my journey with you, I would be deceiving you completely. You see, there's a lot of things, huge chunks of information that I've left out of my version one of the Vitanova journey. Given the information that you currently have, it would be easy to label Vitanova as one of those overnight success stories. I can assure you that my overnight success took me nine years, many, many late nights, and many mistakes and setbacks. You see, what I didn't share with you in my first version of this journey is how I used to work from six until nine in the evenings, many evenings, and Saturdays, just to make sure that I can cover that two and a half thousand rand a month that the garden flat cost. This while my kids were still very young. What I didn't share with you was that five people that worked under the Vita Nova brand, my vision turned reality multidisciplinary team, was also the cause of major headaches, sleepless nights, and many conflict-ridden situations. This often made me question why I even bothered. What's even worse is that some of these people, it turned out, didn't share my work ethic. So this resulted in me constantly worrying about the Vitanova brand and the Vitanova name. Is it being dragged through the mud or not? On a lighter note, what I didn't share with you in version one was the fact that we had to drink horribly cheap coffee just to keep the expenses under control. Writing off 50,000 Rand at the end of the financial year of 2014 was another huge setback. We struggled to get our money from the clients who we saw, many of whom would drive through our gates with brand new cars, license plates not even issued yet. This was hugely frustrating and disheartening. The property that we bought was in desperate need of some love and care, and all this money that we had to write off was actually supposed to go to those kind of renovations. So my whole process was delayed. What I didn't share with you was my internal battle with regards to the HPCSA and registration with that governing body. I was registered with the Council for Councillors of South Africa, but I wasn't sure whether this was sufficient, and I didn't want to do anything unethical. And I can honestly say that that very nearly cost me my Vita Nova dream. And that is why I'm so grateful for the work and all the effort that the ASCHP is doing for us as councillors. As Vita Nova's online presence grew, so did the number of people who contacted us on a regular basis. Now, that's a good thing on the one hand. But on the other hand, I spent hours and hours on the phone answering the same questions over and over again. And you know what those questions are. What are your fees? Where are you located? Does medical aid cover these sessions? And my personal favorite, I need you to please phone my wife or my husband and convince him or her to come to counselling with me. What I failed to mention was the fact that the Humanitas Manual, after getting all the information in, took me about three to four months of working very late evenings, well into the mornings, and very often working straight through weekends to get it done. I actually think that there was a, a time there somewhere where I operated in zombie mode, where the only thing that kept me alive and operational was, at that point at least, decent coffee, liters and liters of decent coffee that I was consuming on a daily basis. My husband and my kids and my family just had to grin and bear and accommodate all of that for the greater good. What I didn't share with you was the fact that the Humanitas internships 
took me four months of continuously phoning people, setting up appointments and meetings, emailing, trying desperately to get people to allow us to send some students their way for their practical hours, scratching options off of my list, trying to find new ones. I remember that I was semi-frantic at one point thinking, these students are starting in September and I haven't got enough spaces for them. How are we going to manage this? In the end, we did, but that was a very tough time as well. There are many, many more examples of things that I did not share with you in version one of my journey. And I would gladly share them all with you if we had the time, but unfortunately we don't. You've all heard that saying, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life, right? I believe that's absolute rubbish. Do what you love and you'll kind of work all the time. That is my constant reality. I absolutely love what I do most of the time. But nothing that's worthwhile comes easily and without sacrifice and hard work. I love the fact that I work for myself. I love the fact that I'm now earning an, a passive income through renting out the training venue and most of my office space to other professionals. That's mostly easy money and this is over and above my counselling practice. I love the fact that I've met people like Heska, Rulin, Luanne and Anshul. And I'm privileged to be able to work with all of them. I love the fact that I can choose my own working hours. I now work Mondays to Fridays from 8 until 1, take it or leave it. I love the fact that I'm able to teach through the training components of Itanova, as I'm also a teacher at heart. I love the fact that I can now afford to drink exceptionally great coffee. But all of these and many more benefits that I'm able to enjoy at the moment are as a result of doing things that I don't like to do and being willing to make mistakes over and over again and willing to learn from those mistakes and implement the lessons learned. Can counseling be a successful and a profitable business? I absolutely believe that it can. If you're willing to take the bad with the good, if you're willing to stick to your vision and persevere and work through all the obstacles in your way. There's another saying that goes, don't compare your chapter one with somebody else's chapter 20. And that's very valuable information. Many of you might want to achieve something similar. The road is long and it's hard. Successful businesses do not pop up overnight. They are built through years and years of dedication and hard work. Here are a few things to remember if you would like to turn your counseling practice into a profitable business. What is your own personal definition of success? I would honestly encourage you to spend some time thinking about this question. What is it that you would like to achieve? Where is it that you would like to end up? Turn that into a nicely formulated long-term goal. Break that long-term goal into shorter term goals and action that one step at a time. Change your direction if you need to. You need a strong online presence. I cannot stress this enough. You need to be reachable and contactable. We live in a technological era where everything is searched for online. So contact professionals to help you with this. Remember that your time is limited. There are only so many available working hours per month and you'll never be able to work all of those hours as you're human and things happen. Life challenges us in, in very different ways, in difficult ways sometimes. Also, look for alternative streams of income. You don't want to be in a position where you are completely and 100% dependent on your hourly rate for an income. Stuff happens if you get ill or you can't work for a week or two and your counseling side of things are standing still, you want other avenues of getting money in as well. Think beyond one-on-one -on -one counseling. If you sell your hour to one person, that's X amount of money. If you sell your hour to a group of people, that just increases your income quite substantially. Look for opportunities. They are everywhere. Keep your eyes and your ears open. Listen to the conversations that you're involved in. What are people talking about? What are they complaining about? What are they worried about? Look for opportunities where you can add value. You adding value is also a business opportunity for you. Network, network, network. Go and talk to your GP, your pharmacist, the fissure around the corner, 
your local nursery school. Make an appointment, go and introduce yourself and see if there aren't ways in which you can be of assistance to these people. They are probably in exactly the same position and would also appreciate referrals from you. Build relationships with people around you. People buy from people. So enable others to market you. If you truly want to grow and expand, you might have to give up some control. A very difficult thing for me, as I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I have extremely high standards, so you can imagine how difficult it is knowing that Peter Maritzburg is operational and running, and I'm here in Pretoria, very far away. Luckily, I've got two amazing ladies running things that side. That's also another point that needs attention. Make sure that the people who you partner with are good people to partner with. Leon always says to me, I just wish you would be willing to fail sooner. And this brings me to our next point. Trust your gut. Yes, give up some of that control, but trust your gut. If there's a gut feel that things are not working the way that they should be working, if there's a gut feel that things are not going to pan out the way that you planned them to, rather action that gut feel. Stop what you're doing, reassess, and change direction. Value yourself and your contribution. Remember that you've got knowledge and skills that the general public does not have. You adding value to other people's lives are a business opportunity for you. Remember that you cannot be a charity organization if you're in private practice. There's enough room for giving back. There's enough room for contributing to society without expecting anything back. But your business side of things have got to be able to sustain the charity side. So you've got to make sure that your business is financially healthy. Self-care. You've got to take care of yourself. You cannot pour from an empty cup. Remember that we deal with very tough situations as counsellors. We hear the worst of the worst often. And it takes something from us. It drains us emotionally. If you do not take care of yourself, you're not going to be able to give your client what he or she needs. And you're going to drain yourself to such an extent that you're going to burn out. Go and read up on all the signs of burnout and all the symptoms and actively guard against that. Angela Lee Duckworth is a psychologist who did a research study and they were trying to find the predictors of success. And what they found was that one characteristic stood out to her and her research team and that was Grit. Angela defines grit in her TED talk and I, I quote, a passion and perseverance for very long-term goals. It's having stamina, sticking with your future day in and day out, not just for the week, not just for the month, but for years, and working very hard to making that future a reality. I can assure you that if you're willing to work hard, if you're willing to stick to your vision, persevere through the tough times. If you're willing to be gritty in your approach to building your practice, there should be no reason why your practice couldn't be a profitable and successful business and why you couldn't enjoy all the amazing benefits that go with it. It is a broken world out there. Life is tough and we have got the absolute privilege of being able to bring a little bit of light into somebody's darkness. We've got the privilege of facilitating change and helping people grow. As Pablo Picasso said, the meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. May your coffee be strong. May you persevere through the tough times and may your practice be a source of hope and inspiration to every single person who walks through your door. This is absolutely my prayer for every single one of you who's watching this and is trying to build a profitable and successful business through building their private practice. Thank you so much for listening. God bless. Goodbye.